What's up, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? I am here with your May 2020 spiritual messages and spiritual reading. Um, if you guys are interested in booking a personal reading or a personal coaching session with me, my information will be down below in the description box. Um, this is for Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. I strongly encourage you guys, I always say this, to make sure you're watching your um, your readings in your sun, your moon, your rising, your slash ascendant, and your Venus sign. Because it gives you a more in-depth view of what's going on in your life. So it's, yeah, definitely watch that. Um, yeah, so we're going to jump right into your reading. The first thing, of course, that we're going to do is pull you a goddess, guidance oracle card. Also, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. This is a beautiful energy. You guys, you know, your cards are already pulled. This is beautiful. Your reading is absolutely beautiful in my opinion. So let's pull you guys a goddess card. You definitely have some energy of someone or someone really rooting for you and really wanting you to, um, you know, succeed in, in whatever way in your spiritual life, in whatever area, um, whether this is ancestral energy. We'll see what your message is. I'm going to pull some cards from that deck as well. Um, or this is somebody in your physical life or both. Okay, so can I have a card for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Can I have a goddess card or whatever comes out? Goddess energy, guidance for my Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. And then we have the arts at the bottom. Express yourself through creative activities. Okay, so Scorpio, there's a need for you guys. Um, to kind of like step into a new zone of creativity, step out of your comfort zone and utilize your creative gifts. Okay. That's at the bottom of the deck. The card that came out is guiding children. Jamara. Jamara, I'm sorry. It says you are good at helping counseling and healing children. Use your skills to help children now. Scorpio. That's beautiful. So I think I gave this same energy to Aquarius. Their energy was so beautiful. Um, so I don't know if some of you guys may have Aquarius in your chart or you, you know, or something like that. Because I got this energy for them as well before. So you have a gift. One of your many gifts, Scorpio, is that you're good with children. Okay. So, yeah. So let's see what um, messages your ancestors, um, your spirit team has for you. What specific messages of the Scorpios? So let's get a, a message. Let's get some messages from your ancestors for my Scorpios. Okay, freedom. Yeah, definitely. Some of you guys definitely have Aquarius in your chart because they got the same card. So what's what's the messages for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Sun rising in Venus messages from the ancestral uh, realm. What are the messages for my Scorpios? Let me slow down. What are the okay? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. That came out of reverse, but I'm gonna turn it this way. But I'm gonna still read it. Okay. Let me have any messages for Scorpio. Sun rising in Venus. For my beautiful Scorpios, messages from the ancestral realm. What is the messages for the Scorpios? Are there any more cards? What are the messages for my Scorpios? What are the messages for having come out? What are the messages for my Scorpios? What are the messages? Okay. We got meditate. A lot of you guys need to meditate. Okay. Meditate Scorpios. All right. So we have. We have freedom. We have persistence. We have work your magic and we have priorities. Mm. Okay. This feels like emotional freedom. So if you're a Scorpio, whether, whatever you have in your chart, right, um, and you are tied to
Yeah, definitely, you guys. Guys, somebody has Aquarius in their chart because this seems very familiar to the energy of Aquarius. There needs to be some emotional healing, emotional balancing that leads to emotional maturity, emotional freedom. And they're going to be with you throughout. Your ancestors are going to be guiding you through this because you get into this place of emotional freedom I just keep hearing emotional freedom right it's like it's 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 all it's tied into your creativity as well so if you get into this energy of mastering and honing in on your creative skills that's going to help with your emotional world as well because it'll be an outlet where you can pour out your emotions into even if it's just getting into journaling writing out you know what i'm saying that's what you need to put into and you need to be persistent about this okay you need to really push yourself i feel like for some of you guys while you're sleeping there's going to be a lot of activity surrounding you when it comes to your ancestors right or it could be one specific ancestor that's really trying to aid you in your emotional strength, okay? Because you're very magical. Oops. You're a very magical person. But you have to know this. It's like once you get a hold and um, once you get a hold of your emotional world, then certain things are going to be revealed, right? Taking charge of your life. You might take, you have, uh, for the most part, have a grip on, you know, day-to-day -day mundane things that you need to take care of. But this is spiritual for a lot of you guys. And I've been feeling this energy, Scorpio, for some months. And I know I've said it in other readings for you, of you not pushing stronger, like pushing towards your spiritual growth. Because a lot of you guys are not stepping into the energy of owning your divine power. I'm surprised that card didn't come out. You're very strong. But it's just like an emotional... That emotional maturity. That emotional... You may be mature in every other facet of your life. But when it comes to your emotions, it's like being able to keep get a hold and a grip on it. Right? to master it. We all have things that we have to master and work on. And I think that's one of the things that you have to work on, Scorpios, okay? So let's get into your reading. At the bottom of the deck, we have the Eight of Pentacles. This is building up on something, working on something, working on your foundation. Definitely, I know I keep saying it, but definitely somebody has Aquarius in their chart because this is like similar, very similar to their energy. Maybe you guys need to watch that Aquarius video. This could be working on your money, saving, building, putting some money aside for, you know, your children, your grandchildren, something like that. This is steadfast building. So this patience, this is patience, this that persistent energy like whether this is your inward world your um you know as far as your money whatever or both for some of you guys okay we have the ace of wands so this is a new beginning this is a major new beginning starting over it has to do some of you guys with your passion and your purpose what are you passionate about what do you feel that you're what do you think that you bring are you supposed to bring to this world you know what I'm saying? Your enthusiasm gives you energy and motivation to work on a meaningful project that's dear to your heart. Some of you guys could have fire in your chart. Earth. Doesn't matter. Spiritual protection. 
some of you guys, this only may apply for maybe one person. Some of you guys have an innate gift to provide protection, like some type of protection for people. Like maybe within yourself, maybe you're realizing it for yourself. And um, this is how you're going to be able to, this is part of your purpose. You're very strong. Remember, I think I was telling y'all in another reading that a lot of you guys were something very powerful in another life. In another lifetime, you guys lived, maybe it was something. You guys were a very highly attuned, spiritually attuned. It was something like that for some. That ain't going to be it for everybody. This is for some who rising in Venus, Scorpio now, right? The Four Pentacles. This is financial um, stability, so financial security. This is part of your new beginning as well for some of you guys. To me, this card is leading the energy throughout your reading. This is the universe. This is one, two, three aces y'all got in y'all in y'all reading. Didn't I say this reading was absolutely beautiful? Absolutely beautiful. Three aces. Some of you guys, you have been praying, asking the universe, asking wherever you deem is your higher source for an increase in your finances. And for a lot of you guys, that is coming. And this is going to give you a new sense of stability, right? This could be tied in with somebody else. So there's a need for some healthy communication when it comes to your relationships as well. This is where that emotional Maturity, the emotional balance comes in, Scorpio, okay? Working with people. Man, you guys definitely have to meditate, okay? Heart-to-heart -heart discussions and clear assertive communication helps you understand and be understood. So you want people to enter and understand your point of view, but you also want to enter and understand other people's point of view, okay? So you want to be cognizant of that. You don't just want to get your point across. You want to be able to see other people's place, their their position, you know. There's going to be some inner guidance, some inner um, like an epiphany moment when it comes to a family situation. This is you operating in your spirit like you. Like now you're be, you're going to begin to step into this energy of listening to that inner voice within you. Whether it's your higher self or it's your um, ancestral, uh, the ancestral realm, your ancestors that's with you. Be extra aware of your inner knowingness as it's trustworthy. So you must trust yourself. This has definitely has to do with family. Whether this is extended family or the family that you created, Scorp created Scorpio. It's, you know, take it as it resonates. You could have Pisces in your chart, or this has to do with a Pisces, okay? Could be some worries around a Pisces situation. Or there could be a need for you to go into this hangman position. So this, so this energy could be released, right? Release the burden of worries by giving them to God for healing and solutions. Because if this is not a person for you, an external person, this is you needing to just stay still, if that makes sense, to not move, okay? This can also mean meditative energy as well, like, remember, you know, going back to that meditation card. So, and then getting, see, like, the hangman, he doesn't do anything, he doesn't take any action, and he gains all of this enlightenment. Some of you guys may need to do that like in, what is it, invert yourself like turn over on the side of your bed and let your head go to the side and just lay not for long now not for long i'm talking about just for like a minute or two just do that turn upside down on your bed even don't take you know what don't leave your head off of your bed just i know it sounds crazy but just sleep the opposite way in your bed okay do that and i think what's going to happen is that you're going to get some spiritual downloads that's going to release this energy off of you. These are necessary worries. And some of you guys, 
I know a lot of, you know, with everything that's going on in the world, you might not be able to get your hands on some citrine, but definitely um, when you're able to, get you some citrine and place it under your pillow and sleep with it there, okay? Yep, sleep with the citrine there, okay? See? Sleep with that citrine under your, if you have some now, definitely do that. You might want to um, cleanse your citrine as well and put it out in the moonlight, okay? If you have some already. Some of you Scorpios are over givers when it comes to love situations, right? Excuse me, and I mean romantic love. And because you're not balanced in your masculine and feminine energies, right? So I feel like for some of you guys, you're too accommodating when it comes to your love life. So there needs to be some balance, you know? Make sure that if you're in a situation where it's a relationship, um, where you're dating someone, um, whatever, if you're starting in that energy, making sure that everybody, like the other person is reciprocating your energy, okay? Reciprocating your time, reciprocating whatever. That there's, there needs to be reciprocity in a, in a situation, okay? If you're in a relationship, a commitment, dating, whatever it is, it needs to be some reciprocity, period. This could also mean third party situation. If there could be somebody either you're having you're putting that third party energy out there or somebody else that you're dealing with is dealing with a third party, okay? So you need to come from this energy of balancing and that's when it's going to happen when you're in this energy and that meditative energy that balancing of the masculine and feminine energies is going to kind of happen. Plus, if you have an ancestor that's with you or more than one ancestor that's helping you balance yourself and get yourself together and heal, then this is going to happen. When that emotional maturity and emotional balance comes in, then you have the uh, masculine and feminine energies balancing out within you. And here comes the Ace of Pentacles. This is definitely, for some of you guys, this is ancestral energy, divine intervention. This is the universe, this is the divine, whoever you call, demons, your higher source. With this, look at this. With the Ace of Cups, hello, right, right next to the Ace of Pentacles. This is self love i felt this when i was dealing this um when i was uh putting out the cards this is your ancestors whoever you deem is your higher source whatever your spirit team consists of whoever this is them ushering in this self-love right i give ancestral energy from this card as well so that could be two there could be a man oh for some of you guys you have three you have two women, a younger woman, um, an older man, and we have an older woman. That are, that's part of your ancestral team, okay? It's three of them. And they are ushering in this newness, this beautifully, beautifully, beautifully um, gift of self-love and self-acceptance. You guys can see They're helping you clear out all self-doubt, self-misery. Things within you, your physical, emotional, or spiritual body that does not serve you. That's what these ancestors are basically working together for. They all could be from the same bloodline, possibly. Oops. But they're helping you to be here. This is you pouring out self-love to yourself. This also for some... Um, could be, you know, a love, uh, somebody else who's interested in you, right? This can also be coming together with two other people. Celebration. It could be something that you're getting ready to celebrate with two other people. Could be two other water signs. And this is what leads to this. So it, it could go either way. You guys coming together, celebrating. It could be this, whatever this is. 
And then there's just like an abundance of love, of newness, of just something that comes out of this. Right? Some of you guys um, need to detox, whether it's your physical body, it's your home, your spiritual body, whatever it is. Some of you guys most definitely need to detox. Okay? That is beautiful, Scorpio. Absolutely beautiful. But let's get into your love portion. That was so beautiful. That was beautiful. But like I said, some of you guys need to watch that Aquarius reading. It may not resonate for you, but I feel like for at least maybe three of you guys, it will. Okay? Let's see what's going on in your love life. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio's love life, divine Holy Spirit, divine Holy Spirit team. Let me get some cards from my Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for May 2020. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, May 2020. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, thank you. Mm-hmm. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, May 2020. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, thank you. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, May 2020. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, May 2020. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, May 2020. Scorpio. Ooh, that's a lot. I'm gonna take these two because these came. This one came out first. Then this one came out, and then it's one more card for Scorpios. Let me get one more card for Scorpios. Sun Moon Rising in Venus. Scorpio Sun Moon Rising in Venus. Scorpio Sun Moon Rising. Thank you so much. Okay. Free yourself. This is not freeing yourself from anyone. This is freeing yourself from that self-negative stuff that's going on. Whether it's self-negative talk, self-negative conditioning, self-negative is something like that, okay? That's what that is. So let's clarify this love yourself first for Scorpio. Let's clarify love yourself first. Clarify love yourself first. Clarify love yourself first. Let's clarify let go of control issues. Let go of control issues. Thank you. Let's clarify getting to know each other. Getting to know each other. Clarify that. Let's clarify getting to know each other. Oh. Getting to know each other. Thank you. Clarify passion. Clarify passion. Clar Thank you. And then let's clarify love yourself. No, I'm sorry. You deserve love. That came out in reverse. Clarify you deserve love. Clarify you deserve love. Whoa, that's a lot. Oh, that's too many. That's at least eight cards. Clarify you deserve love. 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 Clarify you deserve love, please. Clarify you deserve love. All right. The death card. That's your energy, Scorpio. It's transformative. We're in Pluto energy. Oh. Okay. 
free yourself. Yeah, it's, um, you will see a major transformation when it comes to your love life once you transform all of those old self-limiting beliefs, thoughts, actions, and even sabot sabotaging certain things. When you transform that and free yourself from all of that, then you'll see a change, okay? Transformation, yep. Love yourself first. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. I tell people that all the time. When you love yourself, it radiates. People feel it. People know it. They may not even know it. Just, it just, it's just, it's just what it is. It's, you know, it starts within here. So people can sense when you love yourself. People know they can't take advantage of you. They can't run over you. They can't treat you like crap. When you love yourself. The nine of swords and the six of swords. Coming out of that anxiety, that depression, overthinking, insomnia, inner turmoil. This is a lot of inner stuff, a lot of heaviness. And moving into calmer waters. Peace being restored into your life. Moving away from anything that does not um, serve you, your, higher, your highest good. Moving out of that. Let go of control issues. Clarified by the Four of Wands. Allow the situation to unfold naturally. This has to do with family. This has to do, it could be with a father, a mother, and a child. Right? So you're this one, or you're this one, obviously. It definitely has to do with home, building a home, building a foundation. Right? Somebody could be getting married soon or be thinking about marriage. Wanting to marry you. But people need to let go and release that control issues. And I feel like a lot of this stems from conditioning, family, um, generational curses, that energy. I mean, it could be of some people in your family, in your, your bloodline, um, where there's always been like, where people just always have to be in control. And I think that some of you guys have that. And this can also be the other person as well, right? Because these look like two, in my opinion, this looks like two stubborn people. She looks stubborn and he looks stubborn. And it's definitely had, this is two people who have a child together, so it may not resonate for everybody. We have getting to know each other. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. And you guys come out of this conflicting energy of arguing, fighting, disagreeing. And you get to know each other on a deeper level. It's three people. Oh, this is a child, looks like. So there could be a future for two people. If you have a child with somebody, there could definitely be a future. Um, but there's a need because you're uh, assisted by your angelic realm, your ancestral realm. They're here. They could be trying to heal this. Could be with a fire sign. It's fire. There's air. There's a lot of air. Libra, Aquarius, Gemini. There's Taurus, um, Capricorn, and Virgo in here too as well. The more you get to know somebody, the less the conflict, the disagreements, the arguments happen. You understand what I'm saying? The less that, that you, you, you move away from that. Passion. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. Clarified by the Queen of Pentacles. So this is, this coming, like all of this, how it's, you know, the energy is. It's putting you in this more of a stable energy, right? This Queen of Pentacles is very stable. She's emotionally stable. She's spiritually stable. And she's financially stable. And you're open more up to being more passionate with your partner or for the person in the future that you're going to be with, right? It's going to also open up your heart chakra, right? Love yourself first came out in reverse with Page of Pentacles. This is you giving to yourself. This card needs to be like this. So this is you giving more to yourself. You know? You are lovable. Accepting that you are a lovable person. Not being hard on yourself. Releasing all of that other energy that does not serve you anymore. Okay? 
and just being kind and patient and loving to yourself. That's where it starts, Scorpio, okay? So that's the end of y'all reading. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope it helped. I love you guys. Peace. Take care.